This first glorious room contains eight ravenous pictures that were painted by Monet between 1904 and 1908. Seven of these eight pictures were included in Monet's immensely successful 1909 exhibition where he established himself as one of the great leaders of French painting. The pictures were extraordinarily well received. People couldn't believe that he was able to create such extraordinarily narrow variations from one picture to another. Monet begins this suite of pictures by allowing us to understand how the water lily pond itself recedes into the distance by including the bank in the background, but that quickly evaporates and all of a sudden the surface of the pond becomes the surface of the painting. And in 1907, he turns the horizontal rectangle vertical as if it's going to be a portrait of that pond, having the light cascade down through its center like a burning fire, transcendent and at the same time reminiscent ultimately of the twilight there in Givalmy. The 1909 exhibition established Monet's public profile and his great success. However, he didn't paint water lilies again until 1914 when he took up a project to be able to create pictures that would surround the walls of a single room and immerse you in the glories of his water lily pond. Everything changed. The size of his canvases, his ambitions, the monumentality of the scope. These pictures here in the second room are an invitation into that studio where he started creating this project, where he was working. The pictures are about work, exploration, experimentation. All of the paintings in the exhibition after the first room are private pictures, pictures that Monet did primarily for himself. They're large, experimental, aggressive, oftentimes having colors or compositions that seem to defy the public profile that Monet had established in 1909. Of the 27 paintings gathered for the historic exhibition, nine have never been seen here in the United States, and one is completely unknown, the fabulous Japanese bridge picture behind me, whose flourish of paint in the lower left-hand corner bespeaks Monet's incredible virtuosity at somewhere around 82 or 83 years old. This remarkable painting almost defies its own making. At the bottom, you have a traditional perspective system leading you into the distance. But beyond that, above that, throughout the whole picture, it is a cacophony of painterly touch, which seems in the end to be understood only by the magic of Monet's brush and his extraordinary vision. Many of the pictures in the last room are studies for specific paintings in the Angerie Museum in the Tuileries in the heart of Paris, which was the culmination of his project of a decorative room to be surrounded by paintings of his water lily pond. If you walked down the path in Monet's Allée de Rosier, you came to his water lily pond. And this last room invites you into that aquatic paradise with pictures which also seem to be almost impossible as he tries to invent with this extraordinary fluid brush a new language for painting, a new language for art.